uh, good morning and welcome to the second lecture of the lecture series uh, introduction to interaction design. I am Dr. Sonal Atre, assistant professor in the department of design at IIT Roorkee. So, in the last uh, lecture, in the introduction lecture, we saw what is interaction design, what is human computer interaction and the advancements that technology have made uh, since uh, 1950s approximately that today we have such interactive products around us. We also saw uh, some of the initial technologies like ENIAC and uh, we discussed that how did these need of interactive products came about. So, in today's uh, lecture we will continue our discussion and uh, we will be looking at some of the pioneers of the in the area of interaction design and their contributions and we will talk about how and where interaction design fits into the scope of overall design. So, uh, Don Norman is a professor, a uh, researcher and uh, he has spent a lot of uh, uh, his uh, time on understanding the cognitive uh, uh, engineering or the cognitive sciences. So, uh, and has also authored several books and one book which is the design of everyday things is one of the most popular books that generally all design schools uh, and design students they read. So, this books, uh, this book partic particular book talks about the uh, everyday products and what goes into making them you know utility uh, oriented as well as uh, which give joy and also focusing on the a uh, user uh, centered approach that Don Norman undertakes that how can we come up with better products. Then we have Steve uh, Krug, so who is a user experience uh, designer and who has uh, done an extensive amount of work in understanding and uh, teaching about how we can make more interactive experiences for people. And he is the author of the book Do not Make Me Think, which is uh, a book I think which came out in uh, 2000s and since then it has been reprinted a couple of times. But uh, even when it came out in the early 2000s at that time also it held all the wisdom that we still uh, go back to today. So, it is a, it's a good uh, book and recommended for people who are interested to study about the user uh, experience uh, design. Then Dieter Rams is a German uh, designer and uh, he is uh, associated with uh, Braun which is a German company and also uh, Wiss, uh, Witso which is a furniture company. And uh, uh, Dieter uh, has the theory or his uh, belief that less but uh, better. So, that is his uh, mantra that he uh, has and we can see it being reflected in the works that he have done at uh, Braun. For example, the gramophone that he had designed which is also uh, known as the Cinderella's coffin. So, how the lines are simple and beautiful and it serves the purpose. Similarly, the furniture that uh, he has designed is also minimalistic and uh, less but uh, better. Uh, Dieter uh, Ram's work has also uh, influenced uh, the Apple products that we see now where they are utilitarian, but at the same time they are uh, very aesthetically pleasing as well. So, when we see HCI human computer interaction and uh, design, so HCI has come a long way from how it was uh, envisioned or how it used to work initially which was in a very linear fashion. Uh, you can see that uh, from the problem to the prototype that was uh, the approach and design was considered to be having more uh, nuances, more you know connections and more analytical part was also involved there. But now we can see that uh, human computer interaction is also uh, getting uh, more complex, it is also getting the uh, understanding the uh, and integrating the whole design process and design learning to come up with a better and improved uh, interaction uh, with the users and computers. And we can see here that how the theory, analysis, judgment and inspiration they are all being integrated to come up with better human computer interaction and it is not just you know now 
just in the domain of design, but also uh, entering or uh, you can say influencing the human computer interaction domain. Now, uh, what is uh, interaction design? So, we have uh, answered this uh, question in the previous lecture as well, but let us see uh, what it is because to under understand uh, design uh, and to understand that where it fits in the scope of overall design, we need to understand uh, what it is. So, it has several definitions, you can see some definitions on the screen uh, uh, itself, but by interaction design we can also say that designing interactive products to support the way people communicate and interact in their everyday and working lives. Now, interaction design also has certain theories, certain um, approaches and we will be discussing those in detail in some of the future lectures. But let us see that where does interaction design fit in the overall uh, scope of design. So, now UI which is a user interface and UX which is the user experience. So, these are two components of uh, interaction design and the goal of interaction design is to create interfaces that are intuitive, uh, user friendly and also efficient. Whereas, we can see that the user interface design focuses mainly on uh, the uh, interactive aspects of the interface. So, where we have buttons, menus, icons, uh, the layout, also the color scheme is uh, uh, needs to be decided along with the typography. So, all of these things when they are put together well, so they create a visually appealing interface and it makes it very easy for the user to navigate through this uh, interface. User experience is concerned with the overall user experience that how is one feeling like we talked about uh, emotion in the previous lecture. So, are they feeling uh, emotional connect with the with the system or not and also the usability, uh, the accessibility. So, what what is the impact of this particular system in, tho in those particular areas and uh, the UX design is responsible for creating a user centric interface that meets the user's uh, needs and expectations. So, it is very important uh, to consider all of these when we are uh, designing for users because on a daily basis we see many applications come out and many of them die uh, within a few days because maybe one application is very cumbersome to use. <coughs> so, maybe it is not allowing me to uh, get the information uh, quickly or it is taking me round and round in circles and whereas, the other application has a very clear cut you know way in which I am interacting with it, I am able to find my information quickly. For example, if I am searching uh, for my train's arrival, then one app is very efficient in telling me where to expect my coach, where will uh, be my seat, but the other one is taking just confusing me further just a simple example and when we put together uh, the user interface and uh, user experience. So, they both uh, play a critical role in creating a visually appealing and user friendly interfaces and this enhances the user's overall experience with the digital technology. So, uh, we can see here that it is not very simple uh, uh, that UI, UX and user interaction. So, we can see that how so many different domains are also interlinked in uh, uh, creating this particular uh, ecosystem of the uh, design. Now, there are several disciplines uh, coming from the academic disciplines like here we can see ergonomics, psychology, design, informatics that uh, inform the interaction design. Similarly, we have the design practices also like graphic design, product design, industrial design which also uh, inform the uh, interaction design and at the same time we have other areas like human factors, cognitive engineering, uh, cognitive ergonomics, computer supported cooperative work. So, these inform the uh, interaction design and interaction design in turn also informs them. So, uh, we can see that how it is big you know 
learning space for interaction design. Now, uh, we will today be looking at some of the uh, principles uh, when it comes to interaction design. So, these are words, uh, visual representations, physical objects or space, time and behavior and we will just see that how they can make or break the experience of the user when they are interacting with this. Now, words hold a very important uh, meaning because a positive word uh, can really encourage somebody and a negative word can really discourage one. So, we see this all around ourselves as well that how positive people are always uh, making us feel better about ourselves and how negativity really puts our dow us down. So, uh, now how the applications or websites they interact with us, now here we can see that uh, this uh, website is giving the message that uh, uh oh something went wrong on our end. So, what they are doing is they are taking the blame for something that has gone wrong. Now, it may be on their part, it may be on the user's part or it could be some other reason but they are graciously taking this blame on themselves and if you also notice the visual that uh, is supporting this is a dog. So, uh, puppy face uh, which is uh, when somebody makes we tend to forgive uh, them uh, because they are cute. So, now they are also uh, adding to these words a visual which is supporting uh, their apology. On the other hand we can see that how certain uh, words and colors are used to uh, grab the attention of the user like trendy pics for him, snazzy styles for her. So, one would be curious that what is what is the trend nowadays which is going on or what are these uh, snazzy uh, pics, uh, you know how did I miss these uh, snazzy pics. So, maybe uh, uh, let me go and just take a quick look and then one may end up spending more time there. Also, another way is that how the price is mentioned. So, there are many ways uh, that the words are used to uh, pull the uh, consumer or the customer. Now, visual representation is how the instead of words, how we can represent the information visually. Now, for example, if one is looking for an accommodation in Airbnb and we see these images, then we will probably before reading about the what the accommodation is offering in terms of other facilities, we will probably see that what does it look like. If the accommodation appeals to us visually, we will be prompted to read about it and we may also probably overlook some of the and compromise over some other things like maybe the distance from the metro may be uh, too much or maybe um, you know it uh, may not have hot water. So, we may be ready to overlook these small uh, mistakes or small uh, requirements that we have because visually it has appealed to us. Also, if we visually if it does not appeal to us probably we will not even go to the length of reading about the, uh, the description of the accommodation. So, visual representation becomes very important when we are trying to communicate to the user viewer. Now, physical object or uh, space. So, even if we have a you know we have a good set of words, we have very good visual uh, you know imagery with us, but if it is not organized properly in the visual space then it really holds no meaning. So, the whole purpose is lost. So, then we have grids, margins, uh, how do we place the image text. So, it becomes very important that what is the layout how are we presenting this information? So, that it is not just a strewn all over haphazardly, but it has a certain hierarchy, a certain way in which the user can access the information and uh, catch the important information and then go maybe to uh, the less important information. The other thing which is important in the physical uh, object or space is also that if uh, whether the same information I can access in uh, different uh, uh, interfaces like for example, if there is a desktop or a laptop or a tablet or a cell phone. So, am I able to uh, view this effectively in all those four mediums or will it sort of change uh, its form when I am using a mobile and it is not very convenient and it is just convenient to browse on the desktop. So, that is another uh, important thing to be taken care of. And at the same time because what happens is that 
our uh, because our uh, where we are using the uh, particular application will change. I may be uh, using it in Delhi Metro or in DTC bus. So, wherever I am using it, I should be able to access it uh, as I would maybe in the comfort of my home. Now, time is also another very important uh, factor because uh, how much time is it taking for us to complete our function or how much time is it taking us to uh, maybe uh, uh, you know uh, identify something that will uh, make me gravitate towards a certain application uh, because uh, my time is also getting saved. Like for example, if I am uh, going online to purchase a certain product. Now, I uh, if it is an expensive one, I would probably want to compare it with one or two more products. So, do I have to go and search for it somewhere else or is the application presenting me understands my requirements, my needs and it is already comparing it and showing me uh, a table of it. So, I can quickly make, make a judgment for example and many of these applications which earlier did not uh, uh, have this comparative feature. Now, they have introduced that because they are studying the uh, user, they are trying to understand their uh, needs and accordingly they are uh, changing their uh, uh, whole uh, design and the way the user can interact with their product or system. And uh, lastly, we have the uh, behavior that is something that is uh, very challenging uh, because each one of us have a very, very different uh, behavior. Uh, it is very difficult to interpret that how would one behave in a certain situation. Uh, so, there are many permutation and combinations when it comes to the user behavior and uh, behavior is also influenced by many, many factors. So, uh, but this is of great interest for designers to understand that uh, the user behavior. So, sometimes we would want the user to change their behavior. Now, is it possible? Can the application make the user change their behavior or will the user discard it because it is posing to be uh, you know uh, uh, a burden or it is posing to be uh, too uh, restrictive. So, those are things that uh, also uh, designers need to think like for example, all of these apps wherein we uh, say we want to avoid procrastination or we want to um, save our time. So, whether the behavior of the user is actually changing when they are using these applications or after some time the user just you know deletes them from their phone. So, uh, but uh, understanding the behavior of the user is still a very integral and very important area of uh, research for uh, the designers. So, we will end today's uh, lecture here and in the next lecture, we will be looking at some of the processes uh, by which we can identify problems, uh, user problems and how can we come uh, or arrive to uh, the solutions. So, uh, we will uh, stop here, we will meet next time. Thank you.